This is the Fisher Fury, and it started life as a silver, which is interesting because the Fisher Company itself started life as agents for silver and as specialist builders. Well, they then took over the Fury project and they've begun some development work on what is an excellent car already, mostly cosmetic at the moment. And we went down to Kent to take a proper look. So here we are in deepest, darkest Kent, nestled away in the countryside. We've caught up with the main man, Mark. Mark, Fisher Sports Cars have been very successful manufacturing the Fury, and prior to that, as agents for silver auto kits. So how did the business evolve to this stage? Fisher Sports Cars really started as a hobby, uh, which grew up into a business. Um, I have always had interesting specialist sports cars. Um, I've had a number of Caterhams, and in the mid-1980s, um, I followed the kit car racing scene where the um, Striker Mark II was doing very well. And I ended up buying a kit and building one and was uh, very, very impressed by the um, levels of handling, which was certainly comparable to a Caterham. And it all went on from there. It started as a, a hobby where we built cars for, for people and uh, now it's a full-time business employing three people. You retain the agency for Silver of a tremendous racing pedigree. Does that mean Fisher Fury has become a major force in motorsport? They already are a strong force in, uh, in motorsport. We have uh, three or four cars running in the 750 Kit Car Championship and then uh, obviously there are cars running in Sprint Championships and Hill Climb Championships around the country as well. So we hope for great things this year. We have um, uh, a Formula Ford driver racing a Fury in the Kit Car Championship called Andy Charnsley, who I believe is probably going to take the championship. Back to road cars, what does a Fury cost? The average Fury kit starts at about £3,000. Most of our customers spend between £5,000 and £8,000 for putting cars on the road. Uh, and obviously then we do any stage of fully built car. You've two cars in particular being built for customers with unusual power plants. Tell us about these. Yeah, well, the first one has a, a Rover V8 engine in it. And obviously this is quite a surprising uh, choice of engine for a lightweight sports car. But people love the, the noise and the sheer grunt of a V8. The other one is the Honda Fireblade engine car, which uh, is obviously uh, quite interesting having a a very lightweight engine, a very powerful engine, six-speed sequential gearbox. That car is going to be sprinted. And I believe the Fireblade has a lightweight chassis. How heavy is the Fury? The average uh, road car weighs between 580 and 600 kilos. Lightweight racers are down to like 500 kilos. You offer two styling options, the original and your own design. So what led to this? Well, we wanted to offer a variety of uh, body styles. We already produce a standard Fury, which has a windscreen and doors. Um, and obviously with the racing, we wanted to produce a doorless version. Um, so that led to the Spider tub. And then from there, we've now developed the Le Mans bonnet, which uh, just offers a choice in uh, body style. What are your future plans? Obviously the product never stands still. We're always um, developing suspension and chassis design through racing and the quality of body panels, items of trim are always being uh, developed and improved so the product never stands still. Finally, Mark, what are you sitting in? I'm sitting in a replica of a 1920s Austin 7 Special. Uh, this was built out of workshop scraps 